go ahead and uh, open our Bibles. I want us to turn to Revelation chapter 10, and I'm going to, Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. And uh, we want to read what the Lord says here. Anna just came up to me and asked if, uh, because Michael preached half my message, if that means the message is going to be shorter. <laughs> the answer is no, I'm sorry. It's not. It, this, I mean, I, the way I feel right now, I don't know if I'll ever stop. So I am, I feel on fire right now. So amen. We're going to turn to Revelation chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 11. And this is when John is getting the revelation of Jesus Christ and it unfolds about the end of the age and all that transpires with that. And they said to John, and, you, and they said to me, they said to John, the angel of the Lord said to John, you must prophesy again concerning many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I want to make a, an apology to the church of Jesus Christ for the cowardly pastors in this nation that lack a prophetic spirit, their eyes are shut like Eli, and they have no discernment whatsoever about what is taking place in this nation. On behalf, as a pastor, I say to the body of Christ, I am sorry for the way your leaders have led you. Lacking a prophetic spirit, not discerning the times we live in, and remaining silent. They have been just like the pastors in Nazi Germany when the Germans took over that country and there was only a few like Bonhoeffer who stood up against the Antichrist agenda. God, would you move in your church and would you move your people out from under weak, cowardly leadership that will not take a stand against the Antichrist spirit rising up in this nation? And would you raise up Bonhoeffers, would you raise up Firebrand's prophetic ministers with the true spirit of prophecy that would contend and speak into the hour of history we live in and no longer mislead your church because their eyes are blinded like Eli. God, would you remove and bring down pastors and leaders in this nation who have misled your people and lull them to sleep as the enemy came to take over this nation. Remove them, Lord, and make your, bring your bride under true shepherds that have the heart of God and that have the prophetic spirit on them. Listen, it's impossible to talk about the end of the age and the times we live in without mentioning governmental issues. Impossible. Yes, yes. Whoever tells you otherwise is lying to you. Yes. And they do not have the Spirit of God on their lives as, as a prophetic anointing. You look at John, he prophesied about governments. You look at Daniel, he prophesied about governments. You look at Isaiah, he prophesied about governments. Those who are saying in the church, the lying voices in the church that are saying, we don't need to speak about government. We don't need to speak about politics or whatever. That I'm telling you, that is not the voice of the Lord. That is not the prophetic spirit of the Lord. Let us have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the remnant church, the praying and the prophetic church, to think this is the idea in much of the church. Well, we've got 2024. There will not be a 2024. We will never again vote in an election that will have any meaning if we don't win this battle. I want you to know that. There will never again be a vote in this nation that, is, that, is, that has any meaning if we do not win this fraudulent vote right now we're facing. And to listen to the, the false prophets of the media and to listen to the false prophets of big tech, and to listen to the false prophets in the left, and the false prophets even in the right. And to let, this is what breaks my heart the most, to listen to the false voices in the church saying, we just need to move on and unify. They have no earthly idea what is happening in this nation. Don't listen to them. Do not listen to them. Don't listen to them. They are not speaking from the Holy Spirit. 
That was a little intense, but I believe it's the Lord. I was planning to teach the next session on the end times, and, you know, for obvious reasons, I'm not. Um, thinking about it, I said, you know, I better start teaching on this or I'm going to be teaching history rather than prophecy. I mean, we are accelerating to the end of the age, aren't we? So as I get started, I thought you just did. Well, as I get started, I just want to share my heart. I am a messenger before I'm a pastor. I am a watchman and a teacher, but I am a pastor as well. I don't want to be known for an American Christian white nationalist or any of that. That's not where I'm coming from. I wish I could preach right now about the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ and all that. That is where my heart is, God's eternal purpose. I don't ever want to bring political issues like health care, taxes, board, all that stuff into the pulpit. My goal is to be a prophetic voice to say America is at war right now. If you don't know America is at war right now, this is not just an, another election, then you are blind and you are deceived. And God help you for what's coming as we get closer to the end of the age. If you lack the discernment to see what has happened in this nation over the past four years, if you don't see that this is much more than a political battle but a spiritual war related to the end of the age, I, I say this with love in my heart, God help you as we move into the real battles. God help you because you're deceived. You're deceived. And you need spiritual eyes right now to see what is the voice of God speaking in this hour. We've got to hear the voice of God speaking, not all the false voices that are out there. What is the Spirit of the Lord saying to his church? What is he saying? We are in a spiritual war like we have never known. It's contested by world rulers, powers, principalities, and heavenly places. We are, we are in major spiritual conflict right now. The outcome of this election, just do not let anyone deceive you. This is not an ordinary election. This is not, we'll get them in 2024. This is not even Republican versus Democrat. This is not elephant versus donkey. This is a war in the spirit over the, of what end time prophecy has talked about. That is absolutely the truth. This is a war. The outcome of this election has absolute ramifications of whether America aligns with the Antichrist system rising up in the earth and, and, or remains a constitutional republic. America is at war right now. This is what the Lord would say. We have to know this. The church of Jesus Christ has to know we are at war right now. See, we've never experienced what we just witnessed. And I say at the beginning, listen, if Joe Biden won this election fair and square with legal votes, by all means, he should be president. I'm not hanging on because I'm a Trump idolizer or any of that stuff. That's nonsense. May the will of God be done and may the will of the American people be done legally without fraud. If Joe Biden won this election fair and square, he needs to be the president. But unless you have been on a, on a deserted island for the last four years and have not been following what has happened... I mean, just think about what's happened over the last four years. I mean, I knew, I mean, everyone knew there. I mean, if, if you've been following what's happened over the last four years, you would know, okay, there is going to be a massive plan for voter fraud in this election. It didn't take a profit. I mean, I knew that a year or two ago. I mean, it, you know, I just know, okay, who, what are we doing against voter fraud? What are we doing against voter fraud? I mean, think about it. The, the, Think about these things. The Obama administration illegally spied on President Trump and suffered no consequences by our Department of Justice. That has been proven beyond a shadow of doubt. Where are the consequences of justice? Where is it? There has been none. It's, it's absolutely happened. The Democrats, the CIA, the FBI, mainstream media, big tech pushed the fake Russian collusion story 
that Trump colluded with the Russians when in fact they were doing the very same thing they accused Trump of doing. It has become clear that Joe Biden was paid millions of dollars by China and the Ukraine for political favors. That's proven. That has absolutely been proven. And don't let big tech say, oh, well, that's not a proven fact. It has been proven. This has been suppressed by the media. It came out right before the election, but the media suppressed it. They tried to impeach President Trump without a cause. Now, listen to this. Let's, let's take a step back and get perspective for a minute. President Trump comes into office, and China has had incredible success with our other politicians of having favorable tariffs. President Trump comes in and says, I'm putting an end to these tariffs. I'm, put, I'm changing the way our trade policy works. That affects China's economy dra dramatically. Well, later, a coronavirus is released. Whether intentional or unintentional, we can't prove it, but it has been shown that it came out of a biological lab. Okay, what happened after that? Well, the China, this is not conspiracy theory. You can look it up. China and the World Health Organization conspired together and said, we are not going to contain this within China. We're going to let, and they let it, uh, flights go out internationally to the entire world. That's not conspiracy theory. You can go look it up. It is not conspiracy theory, no matter what the media is telling you. It goes out into the world, it, 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 it comes and affects our economy. It locks down the economy. What's the number one determining factor in an election? It's the economy. It's the economy stupid. Remember, whoever said that, the Democratic guy? It's the economy stupid. It hits our economy, and then the Democrats say, well, we need to have mail-in ba ballots so this thing can be safe. If you know anything about mail-in ballots, they are ripe for fraud, ripe for fraud. That was their plan all along. So you're telling me after all of this, and, and, you, and, I, and I, I mean, I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt in my spirit, and I, know, I believe it will come out hopefully by the, by the will of God of what the truth is, there has been an enormous amount of fraud that has swayed this election. So you're telling me that after all of this, this is not a fraud. This is not some kind of takeover by the Democratic Party. This is not a coup. It absolutely is a coup. Listen, this is not a bipartisan issue. If you love the Constitution, if you love this nation, if you love what God has founded in America, this is not a bipartisan issue. This is an American issue. If we do not win this battle of voter fraud, if we do not win this battle for exposure and justice, I'm telling you, we will never, ever again have another uh, election where we the people choose, ever. Don't be deceived about that. That includes, that includes the House and the Senate. That includes every election. It will never, ever again be we the people vote. We've got to win this battle. We've got to win this battle. Amen? It's a, it, it is a serious thing. So we are contending for justice. Luke 18 talks about it. That, I don't, we don't have to turn there, but the, the, the Lord gave a parable and he said, will not God bring justice speedily when the elect cry out for it day and night? We have that guarantee in the scriptures. There has to be justice in this election. Again, I say, if, it, if, if, if we come through and we see very clearly, okay, th this was indeed an election that the American people chose Joe Biden, then God forbid, uh, we need to say we, he is the next president, Trump needs to concede, and we need to move on, all right? We want, I want justice. I want the truth to be exposed, whatever the truth is. And I want justice to come. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm not sitting here fighting that President Trump gets reelected. I'm fighting for justice. If, if this is about the will of God, like Michael said so well, that the will of God, I believe, has been revealed by the prophets. I believe the will of the American people has aligned with the will of God. And I believe there has now come injustice where this election has been stolen. We cannot remain silent. We cannot be still. We must fight in spiritual warfare. Sp I'm not talking about f physical warfare. I'm talking about in prayer and in battle. We must fight. 
So let's talk about this. Michael mentioned it. He, I'm so glad he read Kim Clement's prophetic words that he had in 2007 and 2014. You can't make that up. I mean, Trump wasn't even considering run. I mean, maybe he was in his own heart, but no one knew in 2007 that President Trump was going to run for, re run for a president. And the word of the Lord came to Kim, Kim Clement, and he prophesied it, that, that he would be a, a trumpet would be raised up, that he would, be a, he would have a two-term two presidency, and they would say, impeach, 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 but it would fail. Listen, we've got to right now believe the prophetic word of the Lord. Listen, there is a time when we will, you know, let's just say that what we hope for does not happen. There will be a time when we need to sit down and go, okay, all these prophecies, and I'm telling you, anyone in the prophetic movement who has ever prophesied, I'm, a, I'm being a little ex exaggerating a little bit, but almost every seasoned prophet that I trust has said Donald, it's God's will for Donald Trump to be reelected. And I, I mean, people I respect, uh, I mean, to the uttermost, Terry Bennett, Sadhu, I, I mean, these guys really hear from God with, with accuracy. Now, this is not, listen to me, Right now is not the time to question whether these are from God or not. All right? Listen to me on that. It is not, and I'm seeing all this around going, going viral and on social media. Oh, they're false prophets. They're false prophets. If indeed these prophecies do not come to pass in January, then we need the body of Christ. If we're going to have integrity in the prophetic ministry, the body of Christ needs to look at it and say, okay, why were all these prophets wrong? Why did all these prophets miss it? Well, we, we need to assess it then. Now is not the time to do that. Now is not the time to do that. Now is a time to fight. Now is a time to war. See, the, the, don't we, you know, I know there's, there's, there's been a lot of mixture in the prophetic, but there's some real true prophets in the earth. 2 Chronicles 2.20 tells us, put your trust in the Lord and you will be established. Put your trust in the prophets and you will succeed. Right now, the body of Christ, and I, I, know, I'm, I know right now a majority of the church is just saying we need to move on, but I know there is a remnant out there. I know there is a remnant out there. There is a prophetic praying remnant out there and I want to encourage you, if you are a part of that, put your trust in the prophets and you will succeed. Amen? We'll reevaluate later. Now is not the time. Michael mentioned Daniel chapter 10. This is exactly where the Lord led me the other day. Turn, and, turn to Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel. What has so many prophetic ministers said about uh, President Trump? He's like a Cyrus. He's like a Cyrus. God called Cyrus my anointed, even though he didn't know him. God can't anoint leaders in that way. Notice that it was in the third year of Cyrus, and we're, of course we're taking this out of context to speak prophetically into the situation we find ourselves in. It's in the third year of President Trump, the Cyrus God raised up for this hour. And again, when I say that, I'm not one at all that's, there's a lot of Christians out there that idolize President Trump, and that's absolutely wrong. Jesus Christ is my king, Trump is my president. I mean, don't get, I, I, there's, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of Christians that have gone crazy about President Trump that have idolized this man. I'm not one of those, okay? I want God's will to be done. I'm not idolizing President Trump. But a message was revealed to Daniel. The prophetic word of the Lord came to many prophets in the third year of Trump's presidency. Some before that, but many in the third year. Some in the fourth. Here's the point here. 
The message was true, but it was one of great conflict. That's the, I believe that is the word of the Lord for where we are at right now. The message is true, but it's one of great conflict. And so we've got a war right now. I'm telling you, if you think the conflict was bad in Daniel's day, there was a prince of Persia, and Daniel just had a, a revelation that he had. It took 21 days for the angel to break through the demonic resistance of the prince of Persia. If you think this bad in Daniel's day, you got to understand what's going on right now. We are battling in the heavenlies things that we hit, no one's probably ever battled in history because Satan wants to bring in the new world order, the Antichrist system. There is warfare being fought right now that we don't even have a clue of. I mean, we are in a tremendous spiritual battle right now. So like Michael said, the, the message is true, but what happens is a lot of Christians will just have this false view of God's sovereignty that says, well, God declared it, therefore it's going to happen. No, that's not the way. Now, there's certainly times when there's sovereign decrees of the Lord that are going to happen, and God is going to sovereignly do it. Now, I don't believe this is a sovereign thing of God. I, I believe it's, it's God's choice. I believe it's the American's choice. But we are now in that place of great conflict. We are in that place of great spiritual battle. We've come to the place now, I'm, telling, I'm speaking right now to the praying, prophetic, remnant church. Everyone is going to turn against Donald Trump right now. They already have. The media, the Republicans, the Democrats are never for him. But I'm telling you right now, much of the church is going to be a voice that says it's time for him to move on. It's time for him to concede. They're going to look at people who are still like us, who are fighting until the end, saying you need to move on. That, I'm telling you, that is, I want to encourage you right now, if you're part of the remnant that wants to fight, now is not the time to give in. Now is not the time to surrender. Now is not the time to let go of the horns of the altar, interceding for God to have his will and to have his way. Never give up. Never surrender. Never cave in. Fight until the end. I want, to, I want to raise up a fight in the body of Christ. I'm telling you right now, the place where the church is least like Jesus Christ in conformity into his image is in the place of being a spiritual warrior. Jesus is a warrior. I think John Eldridge said that he, Jesus Christ is way more like William Wallace than he is than mis, like Mr. Rogers. The church still views Jesus Christ like Mr. Rogers. I assure you he is not. He is a mighty warrior dressed for battle. And maybe, perhaps, the Lord has allowed a delay to rise up in the bride a fight a warfare, a battle attitude, a gritted teeth to say we are not letting go until this is done. And then we'll move on. From now until whenever, January, whenever this thing's uh, decided in the courts through litigation, it's time for the church to be that warrior that Jesus Christ is. Not to passively resign and say, I'm just going to rest in God. Now, we need rest and we need to trust him. But I'm saying, this is an hour to fight. This is an hour to war. This is an hour to intercede. Now, just, just so you understand, I'm not talking about physical fighting. I'm talking about prayer. We're to win the battle in, the, in prayer. I would encourage you to read Reese Howell's The Intercessor because God is going to raise up an army of intercessors like Reese Howell who battled and waged war in the spiritual realm and then the natural began to follow suit with the spiritual. Read that book. I encourage you, read that book. That is where we are right now. I mean, if it took 21 days for Daniel just to get a revelation... We're talking about the government. We're talking about the Constitutional Republic of America will forever be altered if they win. Don't, mistake, don't misunderstand what's at stake here. Unless God does a miracle. That, you think I'm exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. I assure you, America as we have known it is gone if they win. That's, how, that's, the, that's what's at stake. We've got to fight. We've got a war. See... 
1 Kings 18, the word of the Lord comes to Elijah. The word of the Lord comes to Elijah, and he says, the, the Lord tells him, it's going to rain, go tell Ahab. Well, if that would have happened to most Christians, Eli if, if most Christians were, if Elijah was like most Christians, what would have happened is Elijah would have just let, said, let the will, the sovereign will of God be done. It's just rain. It's not the shift and the transition of governments. It's just rain. But that's not what Elijah did. If you read in 1 Kings 18, 42, Elijah said there's coming rain. But what was Elijah's posture after delivering the word of the Lord? He got down on his knees and he, he interceded and he was in a birthing position. See, so many Christians just think, okay, we're going to sovereignly let God fulfill this. If it is indeed God's will, it'll happen. Absolutely not. There are sovereign decrees God gives, but this is not, a, I don't believe, a sovereign decree. We've got to give birth to what we believe God is speaking. And Elijah did it. He did it once. Nothing happened. He did it twice. Nothing happened. He did it three times, four times, five times, six times. Finally, on the seventh time, his servant says, I see, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand, and it's coming in. And then the rains began to come. Elijah took the prophetic word of the Lord and gave birth to it through intercession. And I'm calling the intercessors in this church and around whoever's going to hear this, it's time to pray like we have never prayed before. Get ready, get ready. God wants to use a humble, weak, powerless. We have zero power. Look at us. We have zero power. We're completely impotent. But God. But God. But I believe God's going to do it. I don't know what. I don't know how. I'm not going to make any prediction of what it's going to look like. I don't know. I just believe God's going to do something no one expects. The prophets don't know what he's going to do. He's not going to tell them. The demons don't know what he's going to do. He's not going to. They, they'll never ever figure it out. The angels have no idea what he's going to do. God himself knows what he's going to do. And he's going to do something extraordinary. I do not know what. I do not know when. I do not know when. So no one knows when. God has hidden it, I believe, for us to wait for what he's going to do. Like Michael mentioned, 1 Timothy 1.18 is, 1 Timothy 1.18 is that the prophecy came and Paul told Timothy, you are to wage, you are to wage war with the prophecy spoken over you. Well, why would you wage war? If God was going to unconditionally fulfill that, why would you have to wage war? Because they're not, they're not sovereign decrees. Now, everything we see in Scripture is a sovereign decree. That is going to happen. Whether we pray or we don't pray, what God has declared in Scripture is going to happen. We don't have to pray for that. But in, this, in, in certain situations, whether personal or national or international, there are conditions. God does reveal his will, but it's up to the church to pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Like Michael said so well, is God's will, God is, I believe God's already revealed his will. I believe, I believe with all my heart, if the, the, the legal votes were cal, uh, uh, counted and the illegal fraudulent votes were removed, I believe the American people aligned with that in God's will. Well, time will tell. I could be wrong. Time will tell. But now is the time for that, that act of God's justice to come to remove and expose the fraud and the deceit. We've got to pray until the incense bowls tip in favor of the saints. Daniel 7, 21 through 22, I kept looking that a horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. Again, that's talking about the end of the age. I'm applying it prophetically in our situation. Is we've got as intercessors to pray and intercede 
and cry out to God and stand in the gap until the incense bowls are filled and it tips in favor of the saints. We cannot quit. We cannot quit. On April 28, 2019, I remember it so clear. I don't remember much, but I remember this very clear. I was planning to preach. I can't even remember what I was going to preach on. I was planning to preach, but all of a sudden that morning as I was praying, the Lord just sovereignly led me. I mean, I was going to preach about like Ephesians or something, God, God's eternal purpose. I think I was teaching on the ecclesia of the church. And God just supernaturally out of the clear blue directed me to John chapter 11 as a word, of, as a, as a word for America. And I'm like, where in the world is this coming from? To, I, I'll just be honest with you. When I, when I, got, that, when I got the word, I, I had had this <clears throat> negative view of America in terms of God's judgments coming, and we're, we're just, you know, basically doomed. I mean, that was, just to be honest, I was, that was the way I had viewed it. I was like, God's judgments coming, we're in a mess. And the word the Lord gave me was so unbelievably encouraging, it shocked me. It shocked me. And I, I sent it out to our email list. I'll, we'll post it on YouTube as well. I want to encourage you to listen to it. But the, the basis of the word was when, that America is like Lazarus. When it looks like America is sick and dead, then God comes. I want to tell you, yesterday we had two funerals, two deaths. The death of the Constitution of the Republic of America went into the grave yesterday. And Georgia, but we'll leave out Georgia for now. Our, our nation died yesterday. But I believe God is going to call forth Lazarus from the grave after four days when it stinks. And James Gall said the same thing last night. I, heard, I highly recommend you listen to his prophecy. I mean, he, Jesus waited, and I'm going to, this is borrowing from what he said, but Jesus waited until it was stinky and smelly before he came in. <laughs> it's going to get really stinky and really smelly before he intervenes. I mean, and, and the Lord is allowing this to manifest, to uncover the depth of corruption in the swamp. He's allowing the stink and the stench to rise up in this nation. So before the eyes of America and the world, the nations will see the utter depth of corruption in our nation. He's not going to step in until the stink is so bad. And you're like, Lord, why did you wait for so long? And he'll tell us, if you believe you will see the glory of God. Now, I spoke that. You can go back and listen to it. I, the reason I believe now is a time when that's being fulfilled. Now, I'm not saying that Donald Trump's going to be sworn in in January. I'm not saying that. I hope that's the case. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is America is not over yet. God has the final word. God has the final word. America as a constitutional republic was buried yesterday. But I believe God will raise up Lazarus from the dead. After the stink and the stench and the smell has spread through the airwaves to you, everyone can see the utter corruption and fraud and see for themselves the plot of Haman that has, been, has taken place in this nation and then may God, may God take the gallows intended for the Jews in that parable towards the, 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 against the will of God and turn it on their own heads. I'm not wishing anyone destruction. I mean that their plot and plan is reversed. Now, I don't, not, I'm not promising that. I'm not prophesying that. That's my hope. But I know God is not finished with America yet. No matter what happens in January, no matter who's sworn in in January, God is going to raise up America from the dead. Here's, I want, us to under, I want us to feel God's heart in this for a minute. Here's the word the Lord gave me back on April 28, 2019, when he interrupted my plans and he said, because your forefathers honored me, 
by building the government of the United States upon my word. And he's talking about Isaiah 33, 22. I will fight on their behalf. For the great vision they had for America, I will fight on their behalf for original intention. You, this is back in 2019. You are indeed a, in a war for the heart and the soul of this nation. If you will make a sacred vow to fight for America, listen to that. I'm saying it to the intercessors right now. If you will make a sacred vow to fight for America, I will fight with you. God will fight with us. The remnant will save America. The remnant will save America. That's us. That's others around the world. Gideon's army of 300, weak with nothing, hardly any money, hardly any power or influence, hardly, I mean, we're, look, look at us. <laughs> Not many of us are wise and noble in the flesh. God is going to use a weak, depleted, empty army that will stand in the gap and cry out to God for his purposes. God is going to use this army. He is going to use it, and he's going to fight on our behalf and on the behalf of our founding fathers for the vision they established that was from God's heart. He said this in 2019. I believe this is the word of the Lord still. The battle has only begun. This is not over in January. I'm sorry. Those that just want to go on with their normal, everyday life, Conflict is here to stay. It ended in 2020. It's not going back. The battle's only begun. So we can either rise up and fight or sit on our couches and watch Netflix. I mean, what's your choice? It's not going away. It's not going away. It's here until the Lord comes back. And so we've got to fight. We've got to wage war in the spirit for God's purposes. Because your forefathers built their government upon Isaiah 33, 22, the Lord is our law, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, the Lord is our judge. Our three branches of government were established by our founding fathers from Isaiah 33, 22. That did something in the heart of God. That's just not like, oh, well, whatever. That, that, that touched God, I believe. This is because I believe he sh shared that with me. That touched him deeply. I myself will sovereignly fulfill the last part of this verse. He will save us. America will be saved. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know how that's going to transpire. I don't, know, I don't know what timing of it. But I believe the word of the Lord to America is America will be saved. This doesn't mean all of America is going to be saved. It doesn't mean every state in our union is going to be saved. It could very well mean that there's many states that secede from the union. I don't know. I, I believe that's probably something we're going to see before the Lord comes back. But America will be saved. That's the word of the Lord, I believe, to America, to encourage you, America will be saved. There will be a third great awakening. The Holy Spirit is going to be poured out upon this nation. America will be saved. He's going to call forth Lazarus from the grave. Come forth, take off the grave clothes, unbind America. The word of the Lord to the, those trying to control the destiny of America is unbind America and let her go free. America will be saved. He, God is going to honor our forefathers for honoring him. That's how deep this goes. 
That's how deep this goes. Those who honor me, I will honor. America will be saved. America, the latter days will be greater than her former. Now that might mean our size is greatly reduced. It might mean that. I believe it's going to mean that, honestly. And I mentioned that in a previous message a few weeks ago. But God is going to do something. So don't give in to discouragement. Don't give in to despair. God is going to do something. God is not going to just let this go by. He's going to fight for the destiny of this nation. He is. See, what we need right now is we need a Caleb spirit. He had a different spirit. Ten of the spies looked at it and said, no, there's giants in the land. There's the mainstream media who are a false voice to the world, a false prophet to the world. There's big tech that's censoring all the thing that's going on. There's the left that has absolutely become Marxist. There's the globalists who want the agenda 2030, the UN's 2030 agenda, the Great Reset, a new economic system that they want to implement, worldwide socialism. And 10, 10 of the, you know, 10, whatever percentage that is, 10 of the tribes in the church are saying, no, it's too big, it's just done, it's over. Not Caleb, not Caleb. He said, we will not look at that negative report. We will not look at the giants in the land. We are going to believe the word of the Lord no matter what we see with our eyes, no matter what we hear with our ears. We're going to believe the word of the Lord. And Joshua and Caleb entered into that land. Mom had the word that Jezebel has stolen the vineyard of Naboth, the inheritance in this election, may God bring that back to us. So I'll just bring this to a close. What we need to do, our strategy right now, is, is we don't need to pray to let Donald Trump win. I, I believe with all my heart he's already won. Just, just my, that's my opinion. We'll find out if my opinion is right or not. I believe he won. What we need to pray for right now is exposure. Number one, exposure. I love Lou Engel. I don't know if anyone saw his video. I love his voice. It, he, he, may, he gets me so fired up. Expose, expose, expose. I love it. He's right on. That's number one. We've got to pray exposure. We've got to pray exposure. We've got to grit our teeth like a bulldog in the, in the face of God and say, expose, Lord. Expose, expose. And then, this is where, I, I, and I believe that's going to happen. I believe we're going we're gonna to see the ugliness of what has just taken place, the absolute swampiness of what has just taken place. We're going to see the swampy ugliness, the stinky stench of what has taken place. We're going to see it. I believe God is going to bring, bring exposure and then we've got to cry out for justice. This is where I'm really concerned, to be honest. This is my concern for this nation, is do we have the guts to bring justice? Because can you imagine if things are exposed and justice is executed, what will happen in our nation? Do we have the wherewithal to bring justice? Do our judges have that wherewithal? Does the Supreme Court have that wherewithal to bring justice? I don't know if they will or not. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. It's not automatic. They have a choice. We've got to pray. <clears throat> and the, the, the next thing is we've got to believe. I'm not saying our belief is going to make it happen. No. Our belief is not going to determine whether it happens or not. God is going to, you know, God has a final word. But it's our belief that's going to keep us persevering until the end. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. 
If you believe, you will see the glory of God. We cannot give in to doubt. We cannot give in to unbelief. We cannot give in to discouragement. We cannot give in to despair. We cannot give in to quitting. We can't quit right now. We, the body of Christ, cannot quit right now. We must intercede. Now is a time to fight. Never give in. Never surrender. I'm going to read a quote from Winston Churchill. He said, this is the lesson. Never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never in nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except, and accept to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Now, again, once this battle is finally finalized in court, we will move on. But until then, the, the praying church, the remnant church, the prophetic church must intercede like never before, ever before. We are in the greatest battle or one of the greatest battles we've ever been in as a nation. I believe probably in the spirit realm, the greatest battle we've ever been in as a nation. Because what's at stake is the, the prophecies in the, in the book of Revelation. That's what's hanging in the balance right here. So I want to call, we're, we're, we're going to call ourselves, we're going to give details later, but I'm going to call us to prayer. I want to call us to fervent prayer. I want to call us to standing in the gap, doing some fasting. I want to call us to saying we are going to, you know, we are going to do whatever it takes in prayer. And I, even those that would watch that are, that are, you know, on YouTube or whatever, I want to encourage you to prayer. Organize prayer groups, even if it's two or three or five or ten, small groups, it doesn't matter. Organize those. Go forth and commission. I want to encourage those that even that would listen online, even if you feel like you can't do it. Do it. Do it. Organize prayer groups. Organize them on Zoom. Create a Zoom account and call your friends to stand in the gap. We have got to, to bombard heaven with Christ for exposure and justice, exposure and justice, exposure and justice. We cannot quit until Inauguration Day. We've got to fight. We've got to stand. We've got to pray. Don't, and, I, and listen, you, we're going to need to encourage each other. There's going to be, and even today we were writing in, Angie, this is the best night's sleep. And you can probably tell in my message, I feel a little more fiery than normal. I haven't slept good since I moved into this building on Saturday night. Last night, D Diane and my mom prayed for me, and I slept like an absolute baby, but Angie did not. So she was a little bit, what should I say, cantankerous, pessimistic on the way to church. And I was full of faith in the Caleb spirit, and so I'm trying to encourage her, okay, I just break off that discouragement. I break off that despair. I'm telling you, we're all going to battle this, okay? Just, just the pressure is going to become great, okay? I'm speaking to us. I'm speaking to those that will hear this message. The pressure is going to become great. The pressure from family, the pressure from the media, the pressure from coworkers, the pressure in our, uh, in our friends, the pressure in church, the pressure, pressure, pressure is going to become great. We, we've got to ignore their pressure and stand on the word of God until his word comes to pass, or, you know, it doesn't. You know, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not predicting anything. I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know we've got to fight. We cannot give in to despair. We cannot quit. We cannot give in to discouragement. We've got to rise up and fight for this nation. Amen. So we'll end there.